Hello and welcome to our ongoing compliance webinars presented by Mangan. Hello to everyone joining us on the live webinar and a big hello to those viewing us as a recording. My name's Craig Thornton and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer here at Mango. Go ahead, connect with me on LinkedIn and uh, I post uh, interesting articles daily on LinkedIn. Why not subscribe to my blog on the Mango website? I blog weekly about various compliance topics. At the moment Mango is seeking ISO 9001 certification and currently I'm blogging on how we are creating our quality management system and then how we get the quality management system certified. So jump onto our resources area on Mango, there you'll download free forms, free manuals, free checklists plus free presentations on things like internal auditing, health and safety, quality systems and environmental management. So just go to www.mangolive.com, click on the resources tab and download whatever you like. Just some housekeeping rules for the webinar today. Firstly, please ask questions on the question box on your GoToWebinar application. As we go along, I'll pause the webinar and with our panellists, we'll answer those questions. Secondly, I'll be recording this webinar and soon after I'll send you all a link to the presentation. This will be a video of the presentation plus the slides. Please share the presentation with your colleagues. And finally, I'm arranging the next webinar. In that webinar, I'll be talking uh, risk management with a top expert from New Zealand. So that webinar is booked for the 23rd of March, so look out for that invitation. So on to today's topic. Our panellist today is Chris Doherty from FQM, uh, based here in Scotland. Uh, so over to you, Chris, and uh, tell us all about uh, supplier relationship and performance management. Hi, everyone. Thanks very much. Um, let me give you a quick introduction about supplier relationship performance management. So supplier relationship performance management has been a requirement in the ISO standards, various ISO standards, for a number of times. Um, it's heavily focused on the supplier, the management of what it brings and the benefits of it. Um, what we're looking to talk about today is going beyond that, going beyond focusing just on management, which is often a reactive requirement, but focusing the attention on a partnership and what the partnership and relationship brings. Generally speaking, we talk about that being openness, collaboration, learning from lessons, and generally a continual improvement. What you're really looking for is with a proper functioning supplier relationship performance management program is for your key suppliers to be an extension of your management system programs. So uh, a little bit about the objective of today. Um, you'll see some areas of this uh, webinar which is generally focused on a one-to-one -one or one-to-many in-company presentation. Um, so what we're really trying to do is bring the relevant stakeholders involved in the management of suppliers together, provide a bit of background to what SRPM is, um, share experiences and practices, um, the process, the roles and the responsibilities, and importantly, how that may interact with your compliance requirements. So really when we run these programs, what we like to try and identify at the end of it is why we have SRPM, what SRPM is meant to do, how it works, who may be involved in it, and who is supposed to be doing what, so the roles and responsibilities. We'll use a case study which we've developed uh, when we rolled out this system within one of our clients. And uh, we'll try and explain where the benefits of uh, the SRPM program help them and also their supplier. So point one is um, the company we're talking about. Um, they have a, a third party spend. And beca because the third party spend with the supply chain is fairly significant, it's posing a high risk with their financial side of the business and also with their compliance side of the business. So if I run through just this uh, scenario, so we've got a, a company who has a, a, a third party spend of around £800,000, that was in 2012. They had approximately 250 plus suppliers. Um, they had contracts in place with a hundred of those suppliers. 
The other 150 were generally run by purchase order, and they had approximately 15 of those 100 suppliers accounted for about 80% of the contracted spend. So 6% of their contractors or suppliers, they were spending 80% of their supply chain budgets with. Um, compared to the other industries, the ratio of contractors to staff was very high. So this organization was working in the oil and gas industry. But this type of program, I would say, is not specific to oil and gas. We've run this across various organizations, engineering, construction, etc. Um, what we identified with this particular company is that the risks to the company were quite high exposure because 70% of the total working hours within the company were undertaken by contractors and 85% of on-site working hours were undertaken by contractors. So the combined ratio of being high risk and also the uh, financial implications meant that a development of a better program to manage these contractors and suppliers was paramount to the success of the company. So SRPM is a proactive management of supplier relationships to secure a strategic advantage and add value. So effectively what we mean by that is, yes, it's all good and well to be reactive to try and manage your suppliers, and also a little bit proactive in trying to get your suppliers on board with the type of systems and expectations that you want. These may be things that you put into the terms and conditions of a contract. But let's be honest, after that contract has been signed, generally speaking, it very rarely gets looked at again unless there's a dispute. The reason we developed the relationship program with suppliers was really to get honesty, openness, and get people on board. So proactive management of risk, fostering innovation, enabling operational excellence, developing a mutual trust, um, and in some cases, if it's a tight market, it's securing access to scarce resources. And really what you're looking to do is enable the total value of the relationship. And this is why you would focus on just key suppliers. And once you get these on board, and once your suppliers, your key suppliers are on board, what clearly comes of a properly run SRPM system is that the benefits are both to the company and also to the supplier. It provides a platform for the exchange of information across various topics, openness across stakeholders, and it's not set simply with just financial, but it can be looking at compliance, HSEQ, and various other parts of the business. So let me give a little bit of breakdown of what the SRPM process looks like. So effectively, you know, every organization is different. So a high risk in the oil and gas industry may be quite considerably different to a high risk in a construction or a civil organization. Likewise, a financial risk within a high value industry may be quite considerably different to a financial risk in a lower financial industry. So take construction or civil, comparing that to the energy industry. But effectively what you're looking at is you're looking at identifying who your critical suppliers are. And what we look to use for this is a tiering mechanism. So the questions we ask ourselves is, how critical is the supplier to the business? And what's the required management? The activities may be to identify the key stakeholders who the people are that influence the contract. These may be contract owners, technical sponsors, health and safety representatives, and then look to tier the supplier using what we call a segmentation matrix, which we'll go into uh, a little bit later. And the output really of that first part of the process is that you've identified a tier of that supplier. Once you go through the process, um, you look to identify who has the interest or stake in that relationship, um, who can influence it the most, and who are the, your counterpart from the company to the supplier. So who can you get on board with this program 
and who you can use sell the success factors to. So you identify the key stakeholders within the company and on the supplier side and really discuss and agree how to interact throughout the life of the contract. There, there what you can do is develop a relationship map and an SRPM summary program. Once you develop that, you're looking to put in place a performance management program. So how do the company and the supplier communicate? What information should be monitored and shared? And who should be involved and how will that be done? So some things are one-off activities, which must be done in order for the performance management to be successful. And others are ongoing activities. The one-off activities generally are developing and agreeing the contract management plan who the participants would be, and the scheduled meetings. Agree the agendas for the performance reviews. Agree the timeline, and agree the roles and responsibilities when undertaking the performance management reviews. Some ongoing activities would be collecting the necessary information to feed into the contract management plan, and pre preparation of performance reports or performance meetings. The output is that you have a contract management plan that's regularly updated and shared, and a performance review document. And really the co core focus of the performance review document is to be able to feed into areas which need attention and areas where there might have to be a performance improvement. So on the tail end of that, what you're looking at is what does the performance review do for you? Um, so what is a performance? What are you looking for? Depending on the, the contract itself, there will be different drivers, different stakeholder requirements. So what are the areas that once you've developed that program, what are the areas to improve on? You may know some of that before the contract begins, and some of that may change as the contract progresses. But effectively, you're looking to capture the outputs of the performance review meetings, and these should be in a standard format, and these should feed into a performance review summary and performance review improvement program. So we mentioned earlier on about uh, a segmentation matrix. And what this segmentation matrix is for is it's the driver which will help you tier your supply chain or your contractors. The way it's demonstrated on the slide today is that we focus on four tiers of supplier. Tier zero being the most critical to tier three being the least critical. For this particular example, business criticality and spend were the focus of where we put our attention. So high spend mapped with high business criticality was how we identified a tier zero supplier. Spend, as we mentioned in the slide, is uh, company A, maybe two million pounds of a spend with one supplier could be quite critical and high to them. But for another company, a £10,000 spend may be quite high and critical to them. For business criticality, then this can be in different forms. It may be the technology, the complexity that you're working in, the number of alternative suppliers that can provide that product or service to you, and some of the characteristics i.e. the capabilities, the competencies, and sometimes the dependencies you may have on one or many suppliers. But importantly in here, we're talking about compliance. So the health, safety, environmental, quality, and sometimes security risks which would be involved with that supplier. The left-hand panel, which is shrunk down, you will be able to open up when you look at it later, this breaks down and asks the questions that drives the spend and drives the business criticality. And this will take you on the direction from tier three to tier two to tier one to tier zero and identify where you put your attention. The result of this really is for you to identify a plan which will see you looking at your total supply chain and identifying what activities, the frequencies, and who will participate in various performance reviews and a different tailored program depending on the supplier tier. This example which we show today shows from tier zero where your most critical suppliers will be 
and often these will be just less than 10, a handful of suppliers, down to your mass or the tail of your tier three suppliers where you will have many non-critical, non-value or non-high value suppliers where you, it's unlikely you will involve them in this type of program. The tier two and the tier one it can become more optional, but the focus would be on how you determine what you will do within the SRPM program, the frequency you will do it, and who the stakeholder or participants will be. So we mentioned about performance reviews and the platform to cover a range of topics, and these can be from operational performance to strategic plans and leading and lagging indicators from your HSEQ performance. So taking this example we spoke about earlier, the contract management plan for this case study contained HSEQ performance. This was a set of standard and contract specific KPIs. There was operational performance, which was contract and specific KPIs. And then there were other specific ones related just to this supply chain. And, and the last one was covering KPIs relating to people and values associated to the supply chain and how they link to the company's values. We also, within the performance review, look at audit feedback. We look at the relationship matrix, how well the SRPM program is working and how well the stakeholders are communicating with each other. There's a business outlook, um, so the company will share with the supplier what their business outlook looks like where there is other opportunities for them to work together. And spe specifically, they'll look at um, different interests there may be between both parties. So is there a technology or an innovative service that may improve both what the supplier does for the company, but also look at um, ways and means of solving problems for the company? Talking a little bit about key stakeholders and their roles, it's important that you identify within the key stakeholders what their relationship is with their counterpart and also what part they play within the supplier relationship program. At the end of the day, you need everyone on board for this to drive value and therefore it's important that the various roles, and in this case we've got some examples of contract sponsors, generally senior people within the organisation, Contract owners, who typically are the people who run the contracts on a daily basis. Some technical people who may come in at periodic times. The supply chain or the purchasing department that effectively is the gatekeeper and the coordinator of these events. And then your HSEQ, QHSE, safety reps, whatever terminology you, you use. These are the people that on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month basis, they're looking after the risks associated with health, safety, environment and quality. What's really important here is that we need to be clear that the people that own these responsibilities are aware of them and they're aware of exactly what it is they have to do. One of the ways of doing that is we develop RACI charts, which effectively what they do is they identify various activities, the frequencies of those activities and where various people within the organisation uh, and the supply chain have responsibility, accountability, may be consulted or may just have to be informed of certain activities. Everyone will have their own version of this type of interaction um, and RACI methodology, methodology is just one way of representing how that looks. Importantly, we've also documented in here the frequency of expectation and what would be expected as the outputs of these events. So going into a little bit more detail about a specific case study. So this was a onshore and offshore drilling contractor that was basically providing um, different types of drilling rigs to this particular company. They had operating revenues of around 200 million US dollars in 2012, an income of 40 million. They do civil construction and oil and gas drilling, and they were identified through the uh, segmentation matrix that they were a tier zero supplier. Um, they spent, the spend with this particular supplier by this company 
was five million British pounds per year, and they had a contract uh, of approximately three years with options to expand two years. So effectively what we did with this program was we went initially through a segmentation matrix, bringing in the various stakeholders from project, operations, HSEQ and supply chain. And based on what was identified as the key risks with this supplier and the work they were going to deliver, we identified through the segmentation matrix that they were a tier zero supplier. And then it was developing a relationship management summary plan, which effectively drove down and identified who the key responsible people were at each side of the fence, the company and the supplier. Then it was developing the performance review plan. What was expected? Where were the risks? And where did the focus have to be? This also looked at logging the schedule and identifying the interactions of sharing reports, sharing information, and one-to-one -one and various meetings, and indicated the timelines and also, importantly, the preparation time that was required to undertake the meetings. Based on that schedule, a draft contract management plan was created by the company. It identified what the draft KPIs would be, a dashboard looking to identify what would be the drivers, and of course action plans on where known weaknesses were um, at this stage. This was shared with the supplier, and then an agreed situation came about through a meeting. This can be done uh, remotely or it can be done through a meeting, where at the end what you have is you've got an agreed contract management plan, sets out frequencies, activities, scheduling, and importantly who the stakeholders and responsibilities lie with. Based on that, there would be regular performance review meetings, and within that performance review meeting, there would be an exact agenda of what would be agreed and discussed. And the key driver for the performance review is, of course, looking at issues, but it's generally focusing on how things can continually improve. And like I said, um, if you get your suppliers on board with this type of relationship, then they're far more open, they're far more willing to share where things can be improved or where things have gone wrong. Based on the output of the performance review meeting and document, there will be a list of actions. And this action log clearly identifies who would take responsibility for doing various different activities ahead of the next performance review meeting. So a little bit more detail. This is the segmentation matrix that was used. It was done at a kickoff meeting with the various stakeholders within the, or the organization. And key things here was the risk matrix that was used to identify the HSEQ risks and the operational risks, as well as financial. And in this case, we identified, as I said, that this company was deemed to be a tier zero high risk company. Identifying the stakeholders was the next activity that we focused on, which allowed us to see the frequency of interaction that would take place between various stakeholders, both within the company and the supply chain, whether they would be accountable, responsible, consulted or informed. There would be a summary sheet uh, created which identified contact details, email addresses, telephone numbers, and in some cases, uh, people who would deputize for others if they're not in, uh, working at that time. The activities plan or performance review plan would identify the key areas where you would focus the timeline and the preparation to prepare this documentation and information for sharing with each other. There was then a contract management plan created. This contract management plan is the real driver which focuses on the KPIs which are agreed between the company and the supplier. And where you would identify maybe some mutual thresholds. In these cases, sometimes you can put incentives and bonus programs in place, but as long as these are well documented within the contract management plan, then these can uh, drive improvement. 
often there will be a, a face to face performance review meeting and the performance review meeting would focus on a set agenda. That agenda can be adjusted to suit whatever the needs are of the business at that time. But effectively it looks at how the relationship is working, how the sharing of key information, the KPIs, how they are being met, and importantly looking at open actions and how well they are being addressed. Key focus here is openness and collaboration and therefore um, people are willing to share uh, the situation and really look to drive performance. So the output of this is a performance review summary report followed by an action plan and well, obviously within the actions these are accountable to individuals with timelines associated to them. The performance improvement plan focuses on the actions where there are particular actions which are not being closed off suitably then these may be escalated uh, into a performance improvement plan and typically these would be shared also with the contract sponsor at this stage so that we can see that these have been escalated to a level where we need maybe more senior people within the organisation to be involved. The, the performance review plan will then be added, once you trigger the performance review plan this would be added to the performance review agenda and these would be uh, there would be a frequency set to when these are reviewed. So basically what we've done here is we've given you a little bit of a brief insight into a program called Supplier Relationship Performance Management. Um, what SRPM is about, why it may be helpful and importantly some of the key tools that you can use for this. Um, we ourselves as a company have consulted using these programs many times over the last four or five years and we've used these with uh, example companies would be a uh, small number of employees but using a large number of subcontractors. Uh, company X for example, they have only 15 employees uh, based in Scotland but they use approximately 200 to 250 suppliers and for their site based activities 90% of their working hours at site are with suppliers and contractors and therefore they deemed this program a necessary requirement for them to protect their reputation um, to ensure that they were using subcontractors and suppliers that met their expectations and importantly that they had the same values and beliefs. Right through to the other ends of the scale where we've been working with large oil and gas operators, companies who employ in excess of 50,000 people but where they have a supply chain which 70-80% of their working hours on platforms and assets are using contractors and therefore their exposure to risk is hugely accelerated due to the fact that they have various different contractors working at different times. So that gives you the broad spectrum of this can be used from small to medium companies right through to large enterprises. And basically that ends uh, my short presentation. Uh, so just on the questions, so just in your question pane there, ask questions of Chris. Uh, so one question I've got you, was was around this small to medium enterprise. So mm. if it's a small enterprise, of, say 15 employees, but they've only got a few suppliers, you wouldn't worry about having a program like this that's that, that you know quite quite detailed. Yeah. So I guess what's important is this is broken down into modules. So it, Yes, there are some modules that you have to do, so module one really you have to do, but there are other modules where you maybe undertake performance review meetings, for example, they may not be required and therefore you can skip certain areas and only focus on what you need to use. So I wouldn't say that they don't have to bother about it. If the risk is big enough to that organisation and they believe that they're exposing themselves by using a supplier 
or a contractor that could import significant risk to their organisation, this would bring about benefit and protection for them. Mm -hmm. How, what, what sort of percentage of companies would be doing this type of thing? What's from your experience? So cer certainly uh, there's a lot of companies talk of doing this and there's a lot of companies say they have programs to monitor and measure their supply chain. Um, many of them achieve ISO certification because they say that. But generally speaking, the majority of them are through proactive management. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's the companies that are, uh, sorry, through reactive management, it's the companies that develop this proactive approach that can demonstrate that they've got greater control. But in terms of the percentages, I think at the moment, we're still talking quite a low number. So if you visited a, a, an oil and gas company, could you tell that they're doing proactive performance management of their suppliers? Or? Yes, yes. So often what happens when we go in is we'll be asked to do a gap analysis assessment. Mm -hmm. And one of the big areas we focus in on is how they manage their supply chain and their contractors, and importantly, what they do to build the relationships and develop these types of programs. Why, why, just from my experience in New Zealand and Australia and South Africa, why, why do you think contractor management is so poorly done over the years you know, and, and companies don't necessarily do this type of performance management? Why, why do you think the contractor management is so poorly done? I think traditionally um, what's typically happened is um, a supply chain is built up over a long period of time and quite often the company are aware of the, the supplier or the contractor and often the, the, the responsibility of managing them falls down to someone in the line and that person within the line um, may have built up quite a strong relationship one-to-one -one with people at that contractor but um, they've not developed the relationship to drive improvement they've just simply developed a relationship one-to-one -one. Um, I think one of the reasons that this has not gone much further is uh, many companies, when you talk to them about their suppliers and their contractors, they often the response you get is, uh, yeah, we've used them for years, they, they're no problem, we don't have any issues with them. Hmm. But it's only when you actually monitor and measure that you start to actually identify that there are regular issues, yes, they may be handled and addressed, but what people don't realise is the effort, the time and the money it takes to actively address these issues rather than be proactive and improve them. So you think that you, if you're proactive you get better quality, better, better service? Absolutely, without a question of doubt. If you adopt these types of programmes across your company, then even the mentality of ensuring that you have suppliers and contractors with the same values and expectations that you have, they rub off, they, 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 they mm -hmm. develop a culture throughout the organisation and that hopefully that culture then passes down through the supply chain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I've pre previously blogged about personality management systems, overcoming management systems, quality mm -hmm. management systems, it's all based on relationships and personality and yeah. and it, it's uh, it's quite a problem that we have to face every day in QHSE. So um, I think we've run out of questions. Uh, thank you, Chris, for uh, running that. That was really good. Um, thank you. If you've got any more questions, just forward them through by email to me and I'll forward them on to Chris and he'll be able to um, answer them for you. Uh, look out for the recording of this webinar. I'll send you all a, a link on an email to the video of this recording uh, so you can watch it back and um, I'm sure if you're kind to Chris might be able to share some of the information more if you want to contact him around using some of those matrices, matrices and things like that so um, keep in contact with me um, but certainly share this presentation with your colleagues and um, again look out for the next webinar and we appreciate your time for today and thank you all for attending. Thank you.